This has surely been a different kind of Holy Week. Yet in all the difference of this week, we're doing our very best as a church to stay connected to each other. We're doing all we know how to do to show our love for each other and to share that love. We're also trying to touch our community. Community ministry still goes on and is important and you're doing such a great job of helping us to touch people who need food and other kinds of care. It's also so good to know that we're praying for each other. So many of our church members have gone through all kinds of different challenges during this time because of hospital stays and all of that. So thank you for praying for each other. Also, I'm so grateful to you for your financial faithfulness. It's a different kind of time, but you're staying faithful and you're doing everything that needs to be done. Will you bow with me please now for a moment of prayer? Father, we thank you so very much for your care for us during this challenging time. Thank you for those who see about each other, who reach out to care and to pray. And I pray now that you'll help us to understand what Easter is about. And you'll help us to see there's a real hope no matter what's going on. In Jesus' name, amen. COVID-19 has changed everything about the way we live. Everything is different. We're doing our very best to do what our authorities have asked us to do. We want to stay safe. Everything is different. Although everything about our way of life is different, the truth of Easter has not changed. And that's what we want to look at this morning. Please hear the word of God as Matthew describes it in his gospel. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. After the Sabbath had done on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I've told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Jesus' time of suffering was over. He was buried late on Friday afternoon. The next day, the chief priests and religious leaders met with Pilate. They wanted Pilate to do something for them. They suggested to Pilate that he put a guard at the tomb. They were saying that if the disciples come and steal the body of Jesus, they would do all kinds of damage. So Pilate ordered soldiers to go and guard the tomb. Now these were men of war. These were strong soldiers. They knew how to take care of something. So they were commanded to go and make the tomb as secure as the soldiers could make it. That they did. The disciples were scared. The power of Rome had destroyed Jesus. They had taken him off the scene. The disciples were frightened. They had put all their hope in Jesus. And now that hope was gone. But then something happened. Sometime before daylight on Sunday morning, God brought the body of Jesus out of that tomb. God brought Jesus out to proclaim a true word of hope. He wanted the world to know God would make a way where there appeared to be no way. 
So this morning, on this Easter morning, may we remember the resurrection of Jesus reminds us that the power of God is greater than the events that defeat us. Jesus' death led the disciples to be defeated. They lost all their hope. Everything about them was destroyed. They were gone. They had put all their hopes in Jesus. They felt like he was their future. And then on that Friday afternoon, that future seemed uncertain. They were defeated. The event of his death had destroyed their hope. Until Jesus came out of the grave and they discovered that God would make a way where there appeared to be no way. There are many events in life that defeat all of us. Those events destroy our hope and take away all sense of certainty for the future. Perhaps you've gone through a failure at work even this week. Something happened at work that just defeated you. You don't know what to do. Or perhaps you're a student in school and you've gone through something this week in school that just really defeated you. Or perhaps you committed an act of sin. You didn't really mean to, but you did. And that sin has defeated you today. COVID-19 is a powerful event that has defeated people all over the world. It's hitting us hard. People don't know what to do. Do we have a future? The resurrection of Jesus reminds us the power of God is greater than any event that defeats us. Jesus, as the resurrected one, will see us through this COVID-19, as horrible as it is and as powerful as, as it is, it will not defeat us. Because the power of God is greater than the events that defeat us. The resurrection of Jesus also reminds us that God's power is greater than the fears that hold us captive. Jesus was killed. All of his followers were scared to death. They went into hiding. They were afraid for their lives. Fear captured them and controlled them. The women went to the tomb early on Sunday morning. They sent it to, an to anoint the dead body of Jesus. To their utter surprise, an angel was there who knew there was nothing else to fear. He said to them, He is risen. They discovered that God had made a way when there appeared to be no way, so fear would not defeat them. What a positive word for us on this Easter morning. COVID-19 is a serious, serious virus. We must take it seriously, and we are. We're doing all we know how to do to deal with it. But fear is a powerful captive that controls so many people. The virus is not going away soon, but Easter reminds us God will make a way through this where there appears to be no way. Jesus is alive. We can trust him. We can put our hopes in him, and he will walk with us through this fear. We all have different fears. Everybody has something they're afraid of that makes them afraid. Perhaps in your family, You've dealt with a serious medical issue this week. Medical issues right now are different. Families can't be with family in hospitals during surgeries. Medical fears are very real. Or perhaps you've had a serious family problem. You're not sure what to do. Your family's in trouble. You're afraid. Please remember God makes a way when there appears to be no way and fear will not capture us. Here's why the resurrection of Jesus is so powerful. All the disciples were scared to death. They were in bondage to fear. Fear captured them and controlled their lives. But God made a way in Jesus to take them out of their fears. The people of England were concerned about the Battle of Waterloo. They knew that Wellington was going to deal with Napoleon. The future of England was at stake in that battle. There were no telephones or telegraphs 
at that time in history. So the only way the people of England could know what was occurring in the battle was to have somebody on a ship with code flags indicating what was going on. On the horizon of a ship was a ship who was signaling with codes to a man standing on the top of Westminster Chapel. Here was what he signaled. Wellington defeated. And unfortunately about that time a heavy fog engulfed the ship. The man on top of the cathedral could not see anything else. Quickly the word spread through England. Wellington defeated. Fear captured the people of England. Word spread fast. But about three hours later the fog lifted. And here was the rest of the message. Wellington defeated the enemy. Everything changed. Word of hope spread like wildfire through England. The people had hope. At first, the message went out on that Friday afternoon, Christ has been defeated. But God had other plans. Early on Sunday morning, Jesus came from the grave, and the word went out, Christ has defeated the power of death. Hope sprang again in the hearts of all the people. He was alive. The resurrection of Jesus also reminds us that God's power is greater than the indifference or apathy that has marked our faith. When the risen Lord spoke to those women, something happened. Under no circumstances would those women have been bold enough to go back and tell the disciples that Jesus was alive. They just simply wouldn't have done that. But when the risen Lord spoke to them, and they knew he was alive, the power of Jesus overcame all of their indifference, and they quickly ran with all of their hearts to tell the disciples Jesus was alive. It impacted the disciples tremendously. Peter, the man who had been so wishy-washy for the three years as a disciple of Jesus, the disciple who had literally denied three times he even knew Jesus, was now so touched by the power of Jesus in his resurrection that he became one of the most vocal spokesmen for Jesus ever to walk. He was so bold, he would say to the authorities, we must obey God and not man. All the disciples came out of hiding and no longer were indifferent, but set on fire to turn the world upside down for Jesus. How we need the resurrection of touch of Jesus on this Easter morning to take our apathy or indifference away and set us on fire for Jesus. The only real hope people have in the face of COVID-19 is in Jesus. I cannot imagine the anxiety or fear that someone must have who doesn't know Jesus if COVID-19 touches them. We need so desperately for the power of God to remove the apathy or the indifference that has so often marked us and set us on fire for Jesus so that we can tell folks there is hope. We can tell folks there is someone who can save them from sin and, and give them confidence for the living of life. Each of us needs to allow Jesus to remove our apathy, our indifference, and set us on fire with a new energy and enthusiasm to tell folks about Jesus. Charles Colson was once a powerful lawyer for President Nixon. Things went bad. He did some horrible things, went to prison. At some point, though, along the way, this man came under conviction of the Holy Spirit and gave his heart to Christ. Chuck Colson began a ministry that touched thousands of people in prisons. On the day before Easter in 1988, at a remote prison in Montana, Chuck Colson was scheduled to speak. He was somewhat weary and just tired. He was not really looking forward to speaking in that setting. Just before he spoke, a prisoner got up to introduce him and to give a testimony. This prisoner said, Ten years ago, Chuck Colson came to this prison to speak. 
because I was not a believer. I sat in my cell and I didn't want to go to any worship service and hear some guy talk about the Christian faith. He said, but I thought, well, the governor is coming and other political leaders, so I guess I'll just go hear this guy. He said, Chuck, you got up and preached. When you finished, I made a mad dash to the door to beat you out. I don't know how you did it, but you were there before I could get there. And you looked me straight in the eye and said, do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? I said, no. And you said to me, then what are you doing here now? Go and get with it. He said, after that exchange with you, I began to feel convicted. A little while later, I gave my heart to Christ. And because I gave my heart to Christ, something happened inside me. I began to realize I needed to talk to all these prisoners in this prison about Jesus. And with an enthusiasm I never dreamed could happen, I started talking to every prisoner in this prison. And today you look. We have a strong, amazing church of believers in this prison. It's all because the power of God gave me new life in Christ. Chuck Colson said, as I sat there that day and looked, a new energy came into my heart and life. I could not believe what the power of God had done in that setting. I became more vibrant than ever in my witness for Jesus. So on this Easter morning, I would ask you, are you indifferent about Christ? Has a sense of apathy touched you so that you're not as concerned to tell people about Jesus? Will you allow the resurrected Christ so to touch you this morning that the apathy or indifference that may have once marked you will be a thing of the past. And you'll give with all of your heart the basic challenge that Jesus told all of us, go and make disciples. People really do need the Lord. That's what Easter Sunday is all about. That's what the power of Christ is all about. May each of us have a new energy to be witnesses for Jesus. Will you pray with me? Father, thank you so very much for this glorious Easter day. Everything is so different, not only in Eufaula, but around the world because of the virus that we're having to deal with. But please remind us that no matter what challenge there may be, the power of God is greater than any challenge we have to face. And because of the resurrection, you will always make a way that we never thought could be made. We thank you and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.